four, three, two, one, and liftoff. Apollo 13 had started as a mission of scientific exploration. It was now a matter of survival. Lovell, Swigert, and Hayes rode in the lunar module attached to a lifeless command module. The command module just slowly kept going down in temperature until I think uh, just prior to re-entry, uh, it was down to about 38 degrees. And along with that, it was a, a sort of a chilling uh, coldness. The walls were perspiring, the windows were completely wet. So if you want my opinion of how they handled the situation when it happened, they handled it exactly like we'd expect them to. They, they were about as well on top of it as anybody could be who knew what we knew, knew, which isn't very much, I'll have to admit. But I think they did everything right within the knowledge that was available to us in uh, a timely fashion, which is what uh, all we expect of them. The astronauts faced another problem their own exhaled breath. The lithium hydroxide chemical to take carbon dioxide out of the air was not sufficient in the lunar module. They would have to adapt the canisters from the command module to fit the hoses in the LEM. On the ground, an adapter was fashioned from materials the crew had available in the LEM. Cardboard from a checklist, plastic bags, and tape. After checkout in an environmental chamber, the directions for construction were sent up to Aquarius. At this point in time, I think the uh, partial pressure of carbon dioxide was uh, reading about 15 millimeters. And we constructed two of these things and put them online, and I think within an hour, the uh, partial pressure of CO2 was down to two tenths. So you see that uh, survival uh, uh, now became one of, uh, of initiative and ingenuity and, and it was one which the ground continually helped us uh, along. We had all kinds of people on the ground trying to think of ways of, of extending our lifetime. There would be still another burn, a mid-course correction to get Apollo 13 into the narrow corridor through the atmosphere for a safe return to Earth. Ignition. Thrust looks good. Shut down. Hang in there, it won't be long. There were moments when I didn't know how much consumables we had, whether we could make it back or not, but uh, uh, in a situation like that, there's only one thing you can do. You just keep going, and uh, you just keep thinking up where you can get more consumables. And uh, so that's exactly what we did. On April 17th, they prepared for re-entry. After a small course correction burn, they jettisoned the damaged service module. Uh, uh, copy that. And there's one whole side of that spacecraft missing. Is that right? And the whole panel is blown out, almost from the uh, base to the uh, engine. It's really a mess. Man, that's unbelievable. Next, they got back into Odyssey to jettison Aquarius prior to entry into the atmosphere. I'm jettison. Okay, copy that. Farewell, Aquarius. We thank you. Odyssey Houston standing by, over. Okay, go over. Houston, we show you on the mains. It really looks great. Apollo 13 is descending. Apollo 13. The recovery over. One spike in this time. The three shoots are displaced in the water. Captain, when I spoke to you on the phone, you said that you regretted that you were unable to complete your mission. I hereby declare that this was a successful mission. From the start, the exploration of space has been hazardous adventure. The voyage of Apollo 13 dramatized its risks. The men of Apollo 13, by their poise and skill, under the most intense kind of pressure, epitomize the character that accepts danger and surmounts it.